Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 13th and final episode of the first season of Hibike Euphonium. Sort of. I said sort of because there is also a season 1 OBA which I will be doing after this, so that's, that's, that's how that works. So, last episode we had it entitled My Euphonium, and that title made a lot of sense after finishing up the episode, because the my in that sentence is definitely Hibike. Kumiko. Kumiko is what I, what I meant to say. <clears throat> so yeah, because there was a lot of her just working hard to like nail a specific part of her part of the performance. You know, really trying to step up so she can be good enough to be worthy of the position that she's in uh, to be able to yeah, perform well at the main performance, which is coming up. So working pretty hard. Blood, sweat, and tears were, were most likely shed through the course of this. And there's also just kind of a theme of the why. You know, why she's uh, playing the euphonium in the first place. We got some stuff with, like, Aoi, you know, who quit. And we had stuff with the, the sister who quit. And we also had a flashback. I kind of forgot to mention this, kind of because it sort of didn't quite click with me the first time I saw it. Because it was only, like, one brief line in that one flashback. Where I think it was a mother that was kind of, like, said something like, You should work hard in her place. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But she says something, something like that. So there's probably just, like, a lot going on in Hebe. Kumiko's head about like why she's doing this and but the most important part of the why that we got in the episode was when she said she liked it so that's really the most important thing and I'm glad we were able to confirm that so uh, this episode we're gonna get into now before I bumble up this intro anymore so let's jump into it three two one play pretty quiet start to it. <laughs> well, right on you. Okay. <laughs> that is not how my morning goes at all. It's more like after five minutes of listening to the alarm go off, I just punch it. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Uh, are you okay? Oh, we have a hair do insane. I knew she was gonna say that. I was waiting for it. The Yosh was coming, I could feel it. Man, the lack of background music is really setting the tone of the scene. <laughs> Oh, Nachon. She came out when you left, and now you came back, and now it's awkward. <laughs> Reina. She saw the finger movements, and she knew it was her time to come over. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I see we're wasting no time this morning. <laughs> oh, God, that was... Oh, God, that was so good. Thank you for that. I, I feel better already. I don't, I don't know about anyone else. Uh, and what's our title? Goodbye Competition. That sounds a little concerning. A little ominous. Uh, my eyes are water a little bit after that. Reina Kumiko sin. I don't don't mind me. <laughs> hmm. well, I imagine we'll have the performance this episode. <laughs> Music, banners. I think there was a word in between those two words, but I, I didn't get to read it. <laughs> Always busy fingers. Just take deep breaths, stay calm. 
<laughs> Stay awake, Arena. Uh, uh. Yeah, I didn't think about it too much, but yeah, just transporting instruments would be a, a task in itself for a big old group. <laughs> I'll forever treasure it. Uh, <laughs> a picture couldn't quite make out much of the picture which is of course intentional I wouldn't dream of it. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Yes, yes. <laughs> Does that get your girls excited? Okay. What are we doing? Team Monica. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's close enough. Yeah, this this is nice, I suppose. <laughs> uh, K.O. R.K. Nice. Action. <laughs> and that name is a mouthful. Ogawasa, Ogasawa, Ogasawa, Ogasawa. <laughs> Naturally, she speaks up first. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that wasn't too bad of a little speech there. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I lifted a different arm that time. I think because the other one was tired. <laughs> so yeah, we're all pretty hyped up. We're all pretty ready for this. Although I think there's still some nervousness and, well, <laughs> motion sickness. <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Well, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty cute. I always love the third person thing. Makes it better. No plane. <laughs> I see we have the no fun allowed, please. There it is. Yeah, we've heard Rika before. From back in the uh the March thingy. <laughs> we got a wave. I was hoping we would. <laughs> Q 
Can we go? Why are you why are you waving at somebody else? No <laughs> Fray for phrasing, but This is very much well used animation budget. Fist fist bump? <laughs> <laughs> okay then. <laughs> yeah, she's really grown on me lately. <laughs> My first green room. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I do love the Kumiko random moments they managed to just sprinkle out throughout episodes. <laughs> you can almost feel the nervousness. <laughs> We're ready. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's hear those hear those voices. Now you There we go. I knew you guys could do it. You got about half an episode left. Tacked her in a weak spot. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have a bunch of tears after this performance. <laughs> I think that made her feel better. I was until you whispered in my ear like that. How? <laughs> For whispering in my ear. You can hear my sleeping cat making subtle noises down there. <laughs> Is she trying to go for a fist bump? <laughs> you didn't cooperate. That hushed voice. And this is the audience. Man, we're playing for, yeah, for like a real audience and everything. Okay, now we're halfway through because we got our mid card. Somehow, the audience being a little bit obscured in the darkness kind of makes it even more 
daunting. <laughs> They're more intimidating for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also not completely sure what she's talking about. I mean, I mean, this is almost the end of season one, but we got more of the show. Let's let's not talk like that. Good old required piece number four. It's a classic. Don't roll on my foot. I have a cat on my left foot. Oh, wow. I can believe this is the same people from episode one. Middle school textbook. <laughs> but <laughs> I love how she's so much closer to Raina's. Bad attitude now. The one she had back back then. A little bit right, it kind of was hard to read that. <laughs> Are we just kind of like listening in? <laughs> Let's do our best, Kumiko. Yeah, they're okay, they're in front of a door. <laughs> A flat sweat flying off. Or tears could be other one. Tears of joy of how how far they've come. Could be both. Kyoto wind wind ensemble competition. I should be able to remember that. Here we go, is this a solo?
<laughs> that look. Stings a little bit. <laughs> uh huh. Just all the people that didn't make it, just kind of listening on. It's, it's, it's a little rough, but. <laughs> okay <laughs> this is where we get the applause I, f I felt like it but I wasn't sure and my cat finally got off my foot <laughs> But yeah, we got through it, guys. We didn't make any big mistakes that I could notice, and the audience seemed to be pretty happy with it, so... I think we can call that a success. <laughs> that breathing, though. <laughs> now his tail is tickling my foot. Okay. Are these like the results? <laughs> Keith Uji High School. Gold! We got the gold. I knew we could do it. But yeah, here we go. <clears throat> this is this is a big thing. The other big thing. Ah oh, man, the tension, the suspense. <laughs> oh wow, just dived. <laughs> that that seems like good news. Is it good news? Sh show me, show me the thingy, please. <laughs> hand, hand holding intensifies. Trying to distract me. I want to see the results. Okay, I think that's I think that's confirmation. <laughs> yeah, roll credits. <laughs> Man, I mean, I couldn't think of a better note to end off on the ep <clears throat> on the season, really. Was, was she just like a jazz in a skirt in that shot? <laughs> it almost looked like fanning, like you would if when you're hot. And man, Oof, I can finally like breathe again. <laughs> oh yeah, the marching uniforms, those, those are great. Good times. Yeah, I think that might have been the one name that I couldn't read on the paper. <laughs> A group shot. Everyone. All 10,000 of us. Got the paper. We got a trophy. <laughs> the green-haired girl in the back with, like, the tears and the arm up. That's something. And just, yeah, just cut. Okay. Okay, that, that was the 13th and final episode of the first season of Hibike Euphonium. And yeah, definitely really good episode. I'm basically out of water. That's, that's unfortunate. 
know, it's really unfortunate it's my last bottle of water too. Anyway, that that was a good episode. It really was. So where where do I begin with the episode? I mean, we had some nice like character interaction stuff early on in the episode. We had he uh, we had I'm not I'm not gonna call her I'm not gonna call her Hibike. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, Umiko, Yumi, Kumiko. Her name is the bane of my existence. Kumiko. She got out of bed, like, right away. <laughs> like, um, probably was a case of not even sleeping very well. You know, it might have been a thing where she was, like, already awake, like, an hour before the alarm went off or would, would, would go off or whatever. And, yeah, we had that. We had to leave. She took, like, I don't know, ten steps <laughs> before she came back. Like, I think she was, like, just barely out of camera shot, ran back. And yeah, as her sister's coming out, I had to assume the sister was just like waiting in her room, listening for when her little sister left and waited to come out. And then she just came back. Otherwise, the timing is a little bit too co coincidental. So I had to assume that's the case. You know, just like to avoid, not because she dislikes or anything, but just like avoiding any potential awkwardness because they do butt heads occasionally. Right. So that is there. And then we kept, we got things to go on pretty well cuz we have Kumiko sitting in the in the on the train like practicing her euphonia movements and then having Reina sit right next to her in her usual kind of like calm stoic sort of way, right? No smiles, no. Hey Kumiko, what's up? It's nice to see you. You mind if I sit here? Nothing. Nothing like that. She just kind of sits there just matter of factly. And then then she gave her a greeting, right? You know, she kind of goes at her own pace. She is special after all. And then we began like a, I don't know what you would call it, an elbowing war between them. It was like the cutest little flirting thing I, I think we've gotten for, for maybe for, I'm not going to say the whole show. We've gotten some good flirting kind of stuff between them, but it was definitely up there. We just had like the back and forth. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I, it just, it kind of gave me a life because then it ended off with some Kumiko giggling after we finished it. That was definitely like top five. Kumiko Reina interactions for me throughout the show. I, I love that so much. Like, my eye was watering a, a bunch, like, for a good, I don't know, minute or two. I was just, like, periodically wipe wiping tears from that eye. But, yeah, that was great. But we had a lot of, uh, after we, once we got, once we got past that, there was a lot of, like, preparing for the performance because we knew we were going to get it this episode. I think there's a lot of nervousness going around, partly because we worked so hard, there's some expectation that we'll do better, and if we somehow don't do better, that's going to be a re real hit to us, right? Because it's the case of we worked so hard, you know, but what, what was it? Why? Why, 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 did we, why did we bother if this, was, if this is how it was going to end up? Like, there's a, there's a concern that that could happen, so I think there's a lot of feelings all around, for sure. You know, Kumiko constantly doing her, like, what would you call it? Shadow practice? Im Im imagery practice, imagey practice, you know, something like that. So, and then of course you had to load up the stuff, and then we had a bit of a, a thingy here. I don't know what you'd call this either. Uh, how did we get to this anyway? It was after talking about the tux. Yeah, she's like, I have, may I have a minute? And then we like started distributing something. <laughs> what exactly were they? <laughs> See. Good luck charms, okay, that's what they call them. I mean that's not that's not doesn't that's not exactly super specific on what they were. They look kinda like balls. I mean they had their initials written on them, which was nice, although I guess some weren't perfect. But yeah, even in the bag, I mean they look kind of spherical. Some some initials were more unfortunate than others. Like one that said ho on it. H O, you know. And one was L O, apparently she wanted it to be R O. Close enough, I mean. Japanese doesn't really have an L, they just have the R. So it's a little bit a little bit complicated because of that. So I th I think it's fine. <laughs> but like, yeah, they're just like um maybe they're supposed to be supposed to be macarons. Cause I think they're like hanging off of a string. <laughs> All I know is a certain ribbon girl <laughs> had hers just enormous. <laughs> and how did she so well, how did why did she just how did she describe it? It's how I show my love through harassment. <laughs> that That's just so true. Remember last episode when Natsuki just like, she was walking by off screen and like ran back over to, to Yuko, <laughs> you know? Like she just, she just like messed back, mess with her, messing with her. So, and what do they say about Kumiko and Reina's? Yeah, hers is KO, hers is RK. <laughs> Yeah, they're the same design, but in different colors. So yeah, very much like a matching sort of thing as you would do for lovers, you know? So I, I have no problem with that. So that was a nice little scene there. 
just distributing some good luck charms to everyone that worked so hard and get to do their best at the performance. But everyone, once we get there, making sure everything's properly in tuned, everything's all right, doing a bit of, you know, a bit of practice just to make sure yeah, everything's, everything's fine. And that took up about half the episode, I want to say. We also had a bit of a awkward uh, fist bump thingy between Kumiko and Tsutsunaku, Tsukamoto, right? Uh, that was, that was kind of funny. So, and then we had the, the performance. Everyone's up there, everyone's ready, and they they perform. I mean, there's not really much to say about it. Like, I'm not music knowledge en knowledgeable enough to really comment on the performance in any real detail, but we did have little things going on here and there, like some people just kind of <laughs> listening through the door. Some, um, some like, internal monologuing from Kumiko about how her attitude towards things has changed, because obviously her and Reina were very differing on their feelings on this like national subject from back in middle school back see scene one episode one where reina's just like you know bawling her eyes out extremely frustrated whereas kumiko not really and the difference was because reina really expected to to get to nationals like she did everything on with that fundamental belief feel feeling it so when that end up doesn't when it ends up not happening it hurts which is of course the biggest downside to to having that sort of perspective is that when it when you do fail it doesn't hurt as much but on the flip side you're much more likely to fail if you don't come into it with that attitude so it's just it's that's just kind of how it is and now it seems like kumiko her way of thinking her attitude has shifted more towards how reina was back then and you know how reina is now right i'm sure reina hasn't changed too much in that in that regard but yeah throughout the performance performance the camera moving around showing all the individual characters you know performing their instruments banging drums playing flutes playing tubas playing everything just a lot of really good shots throughout a lot of good camera work uh had a nice little like high five at some point but had like a sad look on comedy's face at some point i think but that yeah but other than that i don't really know how much to say about it really we we just we got our good news we got the gold i think they're happily implying that they they are going to nationals as well because they said our piece uh, our piece goes on that that is what that implies right i don't know how else to take that especially because they were it did seem like we had a happy positive reception in the audience we had a very nice hug between reina and kumiko like just kind of like dive towards her we had the hand holding fingers laced like intensifying like it's we got some good stuff that's that's, that's all that's all i'm saying so that that was that and I think that's everything I had to say about the episode. Pretty satisfying overall. Pretty well done. So, this is where we usually talk about the overall season. But, uh, obviously there's going to be more of the show. So, I can't really talk about it as if it's like a completed show. Because there's still more to do. Obviously, there's nationals to go to. Among among, among other things. But, still, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this first season. So, now. Obviously, it's got some similarities to a lot of, like competition driven shows any kind of sports club where it's like we're doing our best to go to nationals guys let's let's work hard you know you have scenes of practicing you have scenes of friendship growing stuff like that so a lot of things are kind of inherent with that sort of genre we did get here but because this is a kyoto animation show so much of it was so wonderfully beautifully animated a lot of great looking character designs a lot of really fun amazing character interactions especially between reina and kumiko i know i have not I've kind of made my point on that to the point where I could probably go without saying it again in this video, but I, I will anyway. So, Reina, I mean, as far as character design goes, she is my favorite. She is the most beautiful, and she's also, you know, quirky. <laughs> like, she's pretty stoic and stuff for the most part, but she does have her moments where she can get emotional, you know, when, when it is something that does she just has some strong feelings towards. So, and at the very beginning, things are pretty awkward between her and and Kumiko because of the middle school competition incident. We had, they had a bit of a fight there, so things were a little bit awkward at the beginning, where even, like, talking to her at all seemed like a big hurdle. But by the end of the show, it, we we had a lot of interactions between them. We had the, the, the festival date thing. We had just a lot of sitting next to each other, either playing instruments or, please stop rolling on my foot. Either playing instruments or elbowing, elbow, taking turns elbowing each other, or I think we had some forehead touching at some point. Like, we just had a lot of good skinship stuff as well. So, 
Okay, sorry about that. I suddenly had company company come over, so I had to pause the recording. I don't quite remember where I was talking about the show, but uh, <clears throat> it was good. It was definitely good. I had a lot of that Kyoto Animation goodness you would come to expect in a Kyoto Animation show was well, present here, which was which is what I was hoping for, and it's what I got. So I'm pretty happy with that <clears throat> for sure. And a lot of <clears throat> my voice got to get it back into talking mode. So we'll talk into camera mode, but. Yeah, obviously the the Reina Kumiko thing was like the the biggest relationship in the show. I I think that's fair to say, but obviously there were some other ones too. Kumiko befriending, like having newer friends that she got at uh, during class, uh, Midori and uh, ha Hazuki, right? They obviously were fresher, newer friends. You know, not quite the same deep bond that she has with Reina. So so the interactions with those two weren't quite as strong, weren't quite as uh, it has it has have as much depth as with her and Reina, right? So the Reina woman was the one I was focused about more on. But there's also uh, Tsu Tsukamoto, right? There's a little bit of stuff there because I think she knew him from middle school as well. I think they're like childhood friends. So we had a little bit of stuff between them in the, in the episode too. You know, like the the fist bump, right? So it's good that they're getting along well enough, right? So although they didn't didn't have a huge amount of interactions throughout the show, but from what I, from what, what from what I think we've heard about. You know, middle school they interact more now because I think there was some incident where he like told her not to talk to him or something in front of his friends. I vaguely remember something like that. That was a bit of a, a bit of a drama point, but yeah, they are part of the same win ensemble now, and you know they get along well enough. But then there's also Azusa, right? Um, Asuka. I meant to say Asuka. I'm not thinking of Kale. That would be that would be silly. Asuka is one of my favorite characters, just like hands down, right? I mean, her character design is like a little bit similar to Reina, which is cool, although much more like mature, filled out, Kirby kind of, much more adult looking than some of the other any of the other characters in the in the club, right? And she's just a very she has a lot of she's a, she has a fun personality. She's very, you know, very. Uh, quirky. I don't know the best way to describe it, but yeah, she's just like the character with the most outgoing personality, I think. I think that's a good way to phrase it. But she has fun interactions with like a lot of characters. Definitely Kumiko. I think people at some point mentioned she had something special with Kumiko, right? When they were trying to get her to talk to her or something like that. Uh, you know, that was like in the same, was like the scene before the, the bottle scene that she did, right? So yeah, Asuka's a lot of fun to watch. She, she was a good, she was definitely a point of interest for me with this show. Right, so hopefully we can get some more some amusing Asuka stuff in the future. So, yeah, those are the characters that I, I remember the best. Obviously, there are other characters like Ka Kaori Yuko. I want to say the the ribbon haired girl's name was. And we had them. We had Ali who quit. Like we have other characters as well, but you know, <laughs> they aren't quite as. They don't have as much of a connection to our main girl. Uh, I guess you could say that that's probably the reason why they're not as prominent as some of the other characters mentioned. But it's just overall, overall a fun cast. Like, there's not really any characters that I dislike that I wish wasn't in the show. Which I wish I wish wasn't in the club. I don't think there's really anyone like that. I mean, obviously, Ribbon Girl, she, she's had a bit of antagonistic nature because she's Kawadi's number one fan, so she, like kind of picks fights uh, with that as her motivation, right? But I still don't dislike her or anything. Like, she's still an important part of the show. So, yeah, I don't think there's anyone I really want out of the show. So that's that's always a good sign, uh, definitely. And, yeah, that's all I really have to say about this season, I think, because I am, like I said, a little bit knocked off of my flow because I had a had someone come over so i try to get back into it as best i could but yeah next season next season should be going to nationals so uh, it'll be interesting to see what other things prop crop up how certain relationships do develop maybe maybe new characters will show up will we get like a new member of the club um probably not that's probably not going to be a thing but it would be interesting <laughs> if that was the case you know having hibiki have Kup Kumiko have be like a senpai to somebody else, right? That'd be kind of cool <laughs> because obviously she was the, the new member as a first year joining up. Everything was so new to her. So if we had a chance to put her kind of like in the opposite seat where she brings somebody else new into the fold, teaches them how things work here, stuff like that, that would be cool. It's probably not going to happen, but that would be that would be something. So, yeah, I am enjoying the show. I do look forward to, to watching more and I will, of course, be reacting to more as well. So look forward to that if you enjoyed this but uh for now thank you for watching uh, you click the like button if you liked it support me on patreon if you want me to keep doing what i'm doing leave a comment if you got something to say and uh yeah bye bye